The last part of the unit on group behavior in organizations has to do with conflict. So the syllabus looks at or asks us to look at what causes conflict, what are the effects of conflict, and how do we manage group conflict. Now, if you look at the syllabus here, it only mentions one name in this part of the unit. So we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about what causes conflict and what are the effects because there's really no prescribed research associated with it. So when you talk about conflict, you could break it down usually into four categories, which is internal or external individual versus groups. So you have intrapersonal, which is that internal conflict, interpersonal, person-to-person -person conflict, intragroup, and intergroup. Now for the purpose of organizations, I imagine the internal conflict is not going to be as important as the conflict that exists between people. So what kind of things cause conflict? Well, it could be things that are personal or things that are organizational. Um, so you could you know, brainstorm your own ideas for what might cause conflict, or you may look at maybe one of the textbooks, which talks about things like maybe it's caused by the vulnerability of a worker. Maybe he feels like his job is on the line. Other possibilities include things like maybe having limited resources uh, that can be shared between workers, or perhaps um, some sort of superiority that, or somebody assumes they have superiority over somebody else. So, you know, you could just use common sense here when talking about what might cause a conflict within an organization. So, of course, a company or an organization is going to try its best to reduce conflict, uh, but keep in mind the earlier part of the unit that talked about the Tuckman model of stage development or group development, which deals with um, forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjourning. Uh, it is key that people actually do have some level of conflict to work out their differences and to come to some sort of resolution on an issue. So maybe conflict is not something to completely avoid. But if the conflict becomes overwhelming, it could uh, interfere with workplace morale and overall productivity. So what are some of the ways we could overcome this conflict? Well, according to Thomas 1976, there are five strategies we could use for overcoming conflict. And I like to remember these easily as CCCAA. And this model works best when the conflict is caused by the exchange of ideas. So maybe this wouldn't work in a situation where it has to do with more personality conflicts between people. So one way we can re resolve this is if you have idea A and idea B, you could put them into competition with one another. The most common thing that people often cite when resolving conflicts is compromise, meeting somewhere in the middle. Sometimes compromise is not the best thing because if you get half of one thing and half of another, those two halves might not gel into a complete whole. So maybe you could uh, combine them or collaborate those ideas or have the people collaborate. Um, the first A is avoidance. One person just gets out of the way or just leaves the situation entirely. And the last A, which I often joke with my students, is how I usually solve conflicts with my wife, is I would accommodate. <laughs> just agree and things become easier. Students ask me, well, what's the difference really between avoidance and accommodation? One seems to have a more negative connotation than the other. So avoidance is the other person, again, just gets out of the way, just leaves the picture. Whereas accommodation, the other person is probably still in the picture, uh, involved with the project in some way. To put that another way, let's say, um, well, avoidance is like the kid who has the basketball and he says, you fouled me, and the other person says, no, I didn't, and then he says, well, I'm going to take my ball and go home. So avoidance is taking your ball and going home. Accommodation is more like, okay, you were right, I was wrong, um, let's just keep playing the game. Okay. So these five remedies could be plotted on a graph, um, on an x-axis and a y-axis, and when we do things like this, it makes things look more highfalutin and sophisticated. But it's easy to graph because, of course, compromising is meeting in the middle. 
So if it's going to meet in the middle, it's going to be dab, uh, smack dab in the middle. The other ones uh, could be plotted according to assertiveness and cooperativeness. So for example, if we're competing, well, we're kind of rivals, so we're not going to be too cooperative, but we are competing very vehemently, so we are going to be quite assertive. Um, if we are collaborating, we are cooperating, but we're also doing it in a very uh, willing way or assertive way. Avoiding, of course, is the lowest of, of both categories, and accommodating is being cooperative without asserting yourself too much. So like a husband giving in to his wife's demands, um, he's not a very assertive person. And like many ideas in psychology, they often find themselves becoming used in some sort of measurement instrument. Uh, remember, there's a lot of money in psychology that's outside of therapy. Uh, you could use your psychology know-how to create instruments to measure certain ideas or certain theories. So here we see that there has been a Thomas Kilman conflict mode instrument that's been created based on the original article written by Kenneth Thomas. Uh, I just thought it was interesting to point out that this instrument has been tested cross-culturally. So if you're really desperate for something to evaluate, you might want to talk about perhaps that there is little variation from uh, the 16 countries that were used in doing some sort of cross-cultural uh, research. Um, and that's a pretty large pool of people, 6,000 men and women. We don't know from this here what countries they were, if they were all in the West or maybe all have similar properties, but you know it is something to talk about if you're in the need of some sort of evaluative point. Okay, so essentially that's it for the conflict resolution portion of this unit, but we can go one step further if you'd like, or you could stop the video here if you feel like you've had enough. But a sixth remedy for resolving conflict is something known as the superordinate goal. The superordinate goal is simply that goal which supersedes conflict and brings people together. So a common Hollywood motif might be something like warring nations coming together to defeat a common enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That would be a superordinate goal. Or perhaps you could think about the 1970s when the uh, Soyuz uh, space rocket program joined together with the Apollo uh, program and both the USSR and the U USA have uh, joined forces to you know, work on space station development and various other ventures into sp uh, space. Um, superordinate goals most famously was tested in a field experiment that was done by Muzaffar Sharif. And this experiment, it's very, uh, I don't know, it's one of those experiments that probably can't be done today. You know, this was the good old days before ethics or ethics codes were invented. You took a group of scouts or boys into a summer camp setting, and the boys have very similar qualities. Um, they're all the same um, class, the same religion, and they're all white. And you just give them a minor difference. You have them broken up according to which cabin they're staying in, and they don't actually interact directly except for a few moments. And in the robber's cave experiment, it was discovered that the rattlers and the eagles, even though they had a lot of things in common, developed tribal-like behavior. Uh, think perhaps Lord of the Flies if you've read the book Lord of the Flies. And if you want to pause this and read it, you may. But essentially what happened is the camp counselors, who were actually the experimenters, would put the boys in competition with each other and monitor if fights would break out. And sure enough, there was uh, not only fighting, but perhaps destroying of the other group's property, tearing of their flag. And, you know, I think the counselors did interfere. They tried to exacerbate the conflict um, because they wanted to see if superordinate goals would bring these two groups together and they would actually form some sort of friendship. So what could we do that would give these enemies some sort of common purpose. So what they did was they decided to stop the flow of water to the cabins. And they told the boys that there was a problem with the water tank atop the, the mountain or the hill. 
and that they would need to work together to unblock the storage tank by lifting stones. And there were several other things that they were asked to do, uh, other situations where the boys had to work together to resolve a problem. So, for example, a car getting stuck in a mud or uh, something like that. So you could pause this and read it in your own time or look it up on the Internet. It's a very famous study. But this, again, is another way we could resolve conflicts. So could this be applied to an organization where people are working in a professional environment? And I highly recommend um, looking at this uh, research because, I, you know, even outside of the unit's interest, I think it's just an interesting stu study in itself, uh, partly because it's actually the second study that Sharif tried to do. There's an article in The Guardian that talks about the first experiment he tried to do where the boys refused to fight each other. And the problem was I think the boys were too close prior to the study actually beginning properly. So they made sure in the second study that the boys would stay separate. I should mention that in the Robbers Cave experiment, the boys from different groups eventually formed uh, rather deep friendships. And as a matter of fact, I think the number was 65% of the long-lasting friendships were intergroup friendships, not intragroup friendships. So that's just more data if you need some sort of data to prove that superordinate goals might be something that brings people together. Okay, I think that's enough. Um, I'll see you in another video real soon. Perhaps we will talk about health one day. Bye-bye.